What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video and today we are going to be doing that post Russell Wilson post Bobby Wagner Seattle Seahawks rebuild after we've been doing all the trade rebuilds this week it's only right that we continue it with the Seattle Seahawks side of things. Now before we get into this video though guys you can leave a like and subscribe if you're new be greatly appreciated I also have a football podcast with three of my friends links in the description below if you're interested we've been uh, uploading every week talking about some football free agency signings Russell Wilson all that. So I will tell you, if you're trying to do this trade at home while using the Seattle Seahawks, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world, but I was able to get it accomplished for the most part. So Ross Wilson's in Denver, and then I have the draft picks that they got. I also have Noah Font, but for some reason, they want to put Noah Font at the right guard right now, which is weird because he's literally a tight end. So I'm not really sure why that is the case, because I guess we don't have a guard right now. And then uh, you will see that Drew Locke is not on the team currently. That is because he is a free agent. Denver waived him, and I couldn't really... Do anything about that so i'm just going to sign him free agency he's really cheap and that'll be accomplished there and of course they got shelby harris in the deal as well but i will say this is going to be a fun rebuild we're going to try to put this team back on the map seattle is going rebuild mode they also released bobby wagner as we know uh which was very interesting uh russell wilson bobby wagner both gone from that super bowl team so what we need to do is figure out how to make this seattle team good again i know they're in on deshaun watson and the whole deshaun watson rumors but I don't think I'm going to go for Deshaun Watson this video. It would be cool, but I don't think I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to build through the draft and put the Seattle team back on top that way. So without further ado, guess it only makes sense to go start in free agency. So this Seattle Seahawks team kind of needs a little bit of everything, obviously. So like I said, I do have the offer on Drew Locke since he was part of the trade. Unfortunately, he got released by the Broncos, so couldn't really trade for him. So uh, we will get him via free agency. Hopefully no team comes in and scoops him over us. No one's interested as of right now, but... One thing I know we don't need for sure is uh, wide receivers. I know they've uh, kind of talked about maybe trading Tyler Lockett, which is something we could potentially do, but I'm not going to technically look for that right now. I'm just going to kind of stick with what we have. And maybe next offseason or maybe like before the trade deadline next year, we could trade Tyler Lockett, I guess. I'll keep him for now, though, because we have a lot of positions to address. So I want young players out of free agency. I'm not going to go anything crazy since we are rebuilding. I want young players pieces that's what i kind of want to look for so we need pieces pretty much everywhere so whatever i find is going to work so uh we have a free safety to sean elliott 25 years old makes a lot of sense because our free safety position is really blank right now so obviously marcus williams would be the home run hitter but since we are such a rebuilding roster i'm going to just try to go for somebody different because i get marcus Williams all the time so i'm going to try to do something a little different today just to take a real quick of the free safeties we have um it's going to go yeah we're going to go ahead and try to go for just sean elliott who's 25 years old Bring him next to Jamal Adams. So it'll be interesting to see how Jamal Adams feels about Seattle going the way they are. Obviously, Seattle, like I said, is interested in Watson. They could potentially get him, but there's a lot of teams interested in Watson, so you have no idea who's going to land him. And it seems like Carolina is the favorite, but you never really know. And now, offensive line is a huge problem as well. So obviously, you got Toronto Armstead. Orlando Brown is out here, which he actually got franchise tagged by Kansas City. Uh, so he shouldn't even be out here. So uh, I'm not going to go for Toronto Armstead at 31. And then Brown got franchise tag, so I'm not going to go for him either. And then left guards, we have pretty much... We already... The one piece we do have on our offensive line is a 25-year-old star development, Lewis. So uh, I guess we won't worry about that. And then Ben Jones, uh, as far as centers, we got 27-year-old Ethan Pochich, which might be uh, something we should go after. And then we got 26-year-old Austin Court. But we do have Gabe Jackson as well. Uh, and then we have Trent Brown, DJ Fluker. So not a ton of young offensive linemen to go for, to be honest with you, but... Uh, we definitely need to try. So uh, we got Connor Williams at 25. Tackles is kind of what we need that for the most part. And uh, there's not a ton of good tackles out here, which is the annoying part for us. So um, I don't know, because we do need a center. So maybe we should just go for Ethan Pochich back, who was just here. So I'm going to try to get him back to be our center at 27, just to kind of get somebody for the offensive line, because our offensive line is in shambles right now, and it has been for a while. So um, I think after that, I'm just going to make some real quick signings. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of things i'm gonna need to do so i'm just gonna cut to when i have every signing i want so day one of free agency is gonna look like this for us it's gonna be deshaun elliott we have mike hughes we need some corner so i'm gonna go for him chris barnes it wouldn't be a rebuild video without going for chris barnes who's 24 years old ethan pochich and drew lock of course like i said i had to kind of go for drew lock so let's see if we get lucky with all those signings this obviously isn't gonna make us much better we're here for the long term we're not trying to fix things in one off season so I'm definitely going to be here for a while. So let's go ahead and see. We get everybody besides Pochich. And we didn't get Drew Locke to sign yet, which is just an absolute freaking L. But we did not get a center. We did get Mike Hughes, though, which is good. So uh, we still have uh, to go for Drew Locke. So let's go see if someone is outbidding me 
from my man Drew Locke or if he's just being stubborn. Let's see. No offers yet, so uh, he just decided, like, you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till uh, I see who else, you know, gets me. But uh, no one's going for you, I promise you. So um, I do I do want to walk away with one offensive lineman for sure because it would definitely be an L if we didn't. We need one offensive lineman. Right now, our left tackle is a 58 overall. So maybe we're just better off signing whatever we can get. Uh, so let's go for left tackle. And even if – I guess we might have to just go for, like, George Font for a year or something like that. I, I don't love it, but – uh, we need somebody at that position, get a tackle, get somebody to, for somebody to protect whoever we have playing quarterback. Uh, we'll probably draft quarterback number nine, I imagine. But um, other than that, man, we get the offensive lineman. I think I'm just going to pass on everything else in this free agency class. Like I said, I'm not looking to build everything in one offseason. I want to go for the long term. So if we get Drew Locke in this tackle, I think I'm going to just go straight to the draft and keep uh, building. So uh, draft picks are going to be important in this video. We got to nail every single one. We got George Font. And look, we got Drew Locke. So the trade is complete now. All right, man. That is it. And then we have a fifth year option we need to look at. Let's see what this uh, player, let's see who it's all about. Noah Font. I mean, we just traded for him and uh, he does have some potential. So I think it does make sense to uh, keep Noah Font here. So uh, we'll definitely pick up that fifth year option now. Let's head to the draft. So with the ninth overall pick, I think it is safe to say we are slated to take a quarterback. Would not make sense not to take one. So I know who I want for the Seattle Seahawks team. So let's see if he lands. On, I, I assume he'll fall to number nine. So uh, at pick number nine, I do want to draft a QB. And uh, of course, we're going to go if he's here. He should be here anyway. I don't know if he will be. Let's see. Did Malik Willis fall? Yes, there, there he is. So Malik Willis at number nine, I think makes a lot of sense for Seattle. That's been kind of a rumor. So that's who I'm going to draft. For the Seattle Seahawks team, there's only normal development, but that's fine. I think, like I said, is uh, the huge rumor about Seattle potentially taking a quarterback number nine. So I'm taking Malik Willis with the ninth overall pick. So uh, that is feels pretty good. And then we have a second and we have another second. So um, let's go take a look at what we can get here. And uh, this second round picks, we got free safety. I mean, we need a little bit of everything. So uh, it doesn't really matter what we take. We definitely need whatever we can get. So I see Sanders here, Winfrey. Uh, defensive line makes a lot of sense. I know we definitely need a center as well. So maybe we can gamble and hope the center falls, I guess. I don't know. We need to tackle. There's a lot that we need. So uh, we did sign a free safety. Uh, we have Kingsley here. But I think I'm going to go with Sanders out of Cincinnati. Definitely could build up that defensive line a little bit. We obviously got Shelby Harris, but he's not a long-term option. So we got a hidden development right in at pick number 10. And then we're going to go to our 31st pick here. And uh, hopefully a center falls to us because that's kind of who I want. I don't know if I'll get that lucky. But let's take a look. So, so far, I think we've done pretty good. We got Drake London as a wide receiver you could take as well. But wide receiver is not really a concern for mine uh, right now. We have two solid wide receivers. So, I don't know if we should really be worried about it too much. We got Jarrett Patterson, Jeremy Ruckert. So, we should definitely try to walk away with a center or a tackle out of this draft for sure. Because it is really bad right now. So, I have Nicholas here who is A, impact block, C, pass block, C, run block. Uh, so, could be a potential option. We'll come back to that. And then you got Sean out of uh, UCLA. And I do want to take a look at the centers that are still available. So Jarrett Patterson, round two, three projection. He's got B pass block. He's got C injury, B lead block, B pass block. So that might be the center I go for, to be honest with you, because we need a center very badly and then a tackle as well. So um, since we didn't get Ethan Pochich, which was very unfortunate, I think I'm going to go for Jarrett Patterson here with this other third round pick. He's going to be a normal development as well. But it's better than what we have right now. So uh, that's fine. And so round three, pick 10. Uh, what do we want to do? We want to go with the tackle? Do we want to go with the corner? I mean, there's just so much we need to obviously fill out. So uh, we could really go kind of a number of ways. So um, going to look at, I guess, Tredavious Thompson or Nicholas here. I think it makes sense to take a tackle here. We definitely need to build up this offensive line in the worst way. Uh, you know, it obviously didn't help. That's why Russell Wilson wanted out of here for the most part. So let's go to our next user pick at round four pick number four and uh this will be my last selection so let's go take a look at who we can get here for round four we got nolan smith on the board we got zach we got noah kane Ron robinson every young so i think we should draft the corner option to be honest with you even if they won't be the greatest we definitely just need to have someone be catching d man coverage c press and not really a man coverage corner but i'll take him anyway and uh 95 excel 88 agility 87 jumping 89 speed so um, we are still going to suck this next season for the most part. We did what we could in the draft. We you know, got some young pieces here, which is what we wanted. But we're still here for the long term. And uh, we got our quarterback, Adam Malik, uh, and Malik Willis. So I'm happy with that. So the two 
Offensive line, I mean, we drafted K Main at a 63 and a 64 overall, so not ideal whatsoever. We have Gabe Jackson, Lewis, George. I mean, the offensive line still needs a lot of work. It is very bad. Tower Lockett, DK Metcalf, Dwayne Eskridge, uh, Chris Carson for now, and then Noah Fon, obviously, then Malik Willis. I know that uh, Seattle would probably start Drew Lock right away. Probably, I would imagine. Maybe not, though. You never really know. And then Malik Willis should just be, or whoever, if they do draft a quarterback, obviously there's the potential of Watson, but I just don't see why Watson would want to come to Seattle after everything they have done. And then this is what our defensive line looks like. It's not great whatsoever. And then Mike Hughes and then Deshaun Elliott. We drafted the corner, but end up in the 66 overall. So yeah, this team still looks really bad. But hey, like I said, we are here for the long term. We're going to suck this season. We know that for sure. Uh, but it's okay. We're going to send in the midseason. I think we're going to trade Tyler Lockett because I think it makes sense to do that. We're going to suck. So might as well continue to add the pieces on top. I told you at the midseason mark, we were trading Tyler Lockett. And I'm picking up two picks in this upcoming draft. Jacksonville gets themselves another wide receiver to keep building with Trevor Lawrence. We're currently one in five. Let's keep simulating. So at the end of the season, we actually only finished seven and 10, which actually isn't too bad. It definitely could have been a lot worse. So let's upgrade everybody. So we definitely have some pieces, right? There's some pieces in place, but there's way more still needs to be done. So uh, we are far from done, obviously. We're going to import the 2023 draft class real quick. That way we have that all figured out. We're not drafting uh, just random people that I don't know. So uh, although it's not like I know the 2023 class like that, but uh, let's go take a look at uh, the stats real quick and kind of see what we can get a just kind of see how Malik Willis did and, uh, you know, kind of get a groove on things. So. 28th NFL on offense, and then defense was 14. So defense is actually not too bad. 26 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. So Malik Willis, not a bad rookie year. Not a bad whatsoever. And then rushing-wise, Chris Carson, 1,000 yards. Receiving, Dwayne Eskridge had 1,000 yards, 959 from DK Metcalf, and then 700 from Noah Font. And then defensively, sacks-wise, we had nine from Sanders, who came out of the draft as a rookie, which is awesome. Three and a half from Jordan Brooks, and then three and a half from Shelby Harris. Three from Dar uh, Daryl Taylor and three from Cody Barton. So in interceptions, we had two from Jordan Brooks and two from Barnes and two from Mike Hughes. So to be honest with you, going seven and 10 with the team that we had is not a bad look. I'm uh, kind of actually impressed, a little surprised that we did that good. Like I said, we were one and five at the midseason mark. So we definitely, you know, kind of got uh, a groove on things that started to maybe get some wins here and there. So we're $120 million in cash space. Upgrade everybody real quick. So Malik Willis is going to go up to a 73 overall. So that's awesome. Um, let's go straight to the re-signing stage. $120 million gives us a ton of options to put the Seattle team back on the map. So continue on to build through the draft and get young players. So let's go to re-signing stage and see who would be important to bring back. So don't really know if there's going to be anybody here. There might be. So we got, okay, DK Metcalf's free agent. That actually is interesting. So, um, you know, it'd be interesting to see if DK Metcalf would want to stick around. I assume... I don't know. I mean, I guess he could force his way out. Players have done stuff like that before. Uh, Chris Carson is 28 years old. I don't know if I'll bring him back, to be honest with you. He just had a thousand yard for us, but I wouldn't mind going for a different look at running back and uh, paying running backs, like I said, isn't, or I didn't really say this, but paying running backs isn't really necessary, especially a guy like Chris Carson. But we are going to try to bring back DK Metcalf, obviously. I don't think we're going to pay Chris Carson because I think we could definitely get a running back in the draft. I guess he's only six. I mean, he's not, he's actually kind of cheap. Never mind. So I didn't, I thought you'd want like some kind of bag, but $60 million cap, it's actually not that bad. So you know what? Let's go ahead and sign him. He's back. Chris Carson, welcome back to Seattle. We'll keep him around. So and then I guess we can go for Jason Myers just to continue to uh, be our kicker. So we'll just keep our kicker around. And then that gives us about $90 million, give or take, going into free agency. Um, so we're going to go to free agency and continue to build this team up. We're going to see what we can uh, bring in. Want to take a real quick uh, look at the lineup just to recap what we're definitely going to need. So offensive line, obviously, as we know, was terrible. Um, still needs a lot of work. Very bad. Very, very bad. And then uh, another wide receiver. So we kept Chris Carson. And then Noah Fonts obviously did tight end. And defensively, Sanders, you got Jordan Brooks, Chris Barnes, Deshaun Elliott, and then Mike Hughes. So still a lot of things to do. But hey, we're getting there. So it is time for some cap casualties. We have a few guys here that we can cut just to free up even more money. So Shelby Harris, obviously they got in the trade, but I'm not keeping him. I can free up $9 million by cutting him. So we're going to do that. You also have Gabe Jackson here at 32 years old. I think he makes sense to cut away as well. Obviously he's one of our better offensive linemen, but I'm still going to just cut him. And then last but not least, we have, uh, I believe it was, uh, what? it was Hyder here. So we got 
Hyder Jr., 67 overall. We could free up about $7 million by doing this. So makes all the sense in the world to just cut those three guys, free up even more money. So here's all our offers for day one of free agency in the 2023 offseason. We got Jonah Williams, we got Nate Davis, Greedy Williams, Rashad Fenton, and Puna Ford. So we're trying to keep uh we're trying to keep Puna Ford. We're trying to get a couple of cornerback options because we can you know, continue need to build that up. And then we're trying to obviously build our offensive lineup. That's very bad. So Nate Davis and Jonah Williams. Really hoping both these guys accept. And I think after this, I'm not going to sign anybody else in free agency. I'm going to keep my cap room open. So just to make sure I get both these guys, I'm just going to increase the offers just a little bit more on Nate Davis. So hopefully all five of these guys sign because these are definitely huge signings for us. If we get them. Cornerback will be solved. Uh, we'll bring in a defensive tackle. And then we should have a pretty high draft pick. So we can go for like defensive lineman or maybe wide receiver. So actually we could look at wide receiver as well. Kind of forgot about trading Tower Lockett, obviously. So all five of them accept, which is great. So now we're up to a 79 overall, which is really good. So we're starting to, like I said, build up slowly. So offensive line looks way more better. So we are going to continue to roll with the young guys we did draft. They are pretty bad, but I'm just going to continue to let them develop. It's fine. It's not that big of a deal. So we'll continue to let them develop. And then wide receiver, I think we should get one. And defensively, it looks a lot better. It definitely still some more work to do, but cornerbacks looks a lot better. We got some young corners here now. And Chris Barnes and Darrell Taylor is actually only like 26. So I kind of like him as well. So linebacker options I like. Nose tack. We got Puna Ford back, which is great. Sanders, obviously. So still need to build this defensive line a little bit more. So wide receiver uh, in free agency. And I think in the draft, we'll probably go on the defensive line or just kind of whatever we can get. So free agency real quick. I didn't really look at wide receiver options. So uh, I do want to look with you guys real quickly. So wide receivers, we have Marvin Jones. We have Antonio Brown, Cole Beasley, Cedric Wilson. So yeah, it's not looking that good. And I don't think there's any that, I don't think there's that great of defensive lineman that I want. So obviously JJ Watt's cool, but he's 34. Doesn't really help us out, right? Or he would help us out right now, but it's not really necessary. And Bryce Huff, a 25, I guess we could go for, but I'd rather just try to go in the draft and give myself a chance and see if we can get something better. So, all right, let's go to the draft. We got what we needed to free agency for this off season. Let's go to draft night and uh, see if we can bring in on draft night. They have pick number seven. So honestly in a way it kind of sucks that we were as good as we were towards the end of the season because it would have been nice to have like pick number one or pick number three or something like that but hey pick number seven is still solid so let's go ahead and see if we can get at pick number seven we have a left tackle on the board we have eric gilbert we have a quarterback Ooh, i think it makes sense to go for jervin dexter here power rusher 80 percent completion scouting on him so we do need defensive line really badly tackle wouldn't be bad either but like i said we did draft a couple of guys in the last draft so i kind of just continue to develop them B block, Shani, A finesse moves, A tackle. This is 100% the pick. Welcome to Seattle. We needed you for sure. So that's one pick on our defensive line looking really good. So now let's go to our 23rd overall pick in this draft from the Broncos. And uh, let's go see what we can get at this pick. So pick number 23, you got Peter here. You got Michael Meyer, uh, another outside linebacker. Um, but I kind of want to look and see. I mean, dude, there's so many tackles on the board that maybe I should just take one. We also, like I said, do need a wide receiver. So wide receiver could make sense here as well you got digs out of texas and there's a lot of ways we could go with this pick so um i don't think i'm gonna take tight end and i don't think i'm gonna take a linebacker so a corner went hurt but we kind of addressed that so i think i do want to look at tackle and i also want to look at wide receiver and corner are in a left end so this is gonna be a tough decision miles hinton he's got b impact block b awareness so uh i don't know man do we want to do we want to draft another lineman or do we want to roll with what we got i don't know so and then we obviously do need a uh we do need a wide receiver so let's take a look at marvin mims uh a catching you got b run block d short route i'm gonna take marvin mims here hidden development wide receiver we definitely need another wide receiver opposite of dk metcalf so i think that makes a lot of sense and then we can kind of hope and pray that uh maybe we'll have a tackle drop or whatever would fall here so or if uh digs maybe drop to this spot let's see so we got bj Jalargy. okay digs did fall so we can go ahead and take him out of texas a&m bring in another player on this defensive line welcome to seattle and that looks really good so just like that so far so good in this draft i feel really good about it so now we're going to our 23rd overall pick from the broncos again in this draft so let's go take a look oh we can get one then we have the 27th overall pick i think from the uh tower locket trade so uh bj just keeps falling here and it kind of makes me want to take him because i know for sure he's a hidden development so we could definitely take him and just that kind of stock him on I think we're going to do it. We're going to take BJ Ojolari out of LSU. Welcome to Seattle. I um, mean, you're going to keep falling, so might as well just bring you in. And then let's go to our second round pick later on in this draft. And at pick number 27, 
Um, I mean, we'll probably just go best available here at this point because I think I've pretty much got every position I needed. We have a left end. We have another wide receiver, which another wide receiver wouldn't hurt. Another corner wouldn't hurt either. So uh, we'll take a look at either one of these guys. So Aaron Jordan Birch is available as well that we could maybe go for. Emmanuel Forbes, B-man coverage, B-zone coverage actually looks really solid. We're going to go ahead and take a corner here, hand development corner, which is kind of what we needed. So that gives us another option at cornerback. I'm really loving how this draft or how this rebuild is going so far. I think we're doing really solid. So um, two more picks and then I'm done and we're exiting out of this draft. So uh, wide receivers falls here. We got another defensive tackle we could take that might be able to replace Puna Ford later on. So that somebody we could look at. So we got C block shedding, C tackle, and then B player reduction, B awareness, D impact block. So you know what? Sure, why not? Normal development defensive tackle, but no big deal. It's just another depth depth uh, uh, draft pick there at the defensive line. And then at pick number 27, if we get lucky and that wide receiver keeps falling, we might just take him. Let's see if he's still here. And he is not. Darnell Wright, though, we could take a tackle or, yeah, we could take it. There's nothing but tackles. And we could take a uh, running back because Chris Carson might not be here forever. So Jack Nelson, we got B awareness, B impact block, C pass block, C run block. Yep, we'll, we'll take a we'll take a tackle here, and I think I'm gonna call it good after that. So this draft I think went really freaking well for us, and I'm sure it could go even better with the assistant GM taking the rest of the selection. So feel really good about how that draft went, and let's go take a little look at our lineup after the draft and kind of see what the Seattle team is shaping up and looking like. So this is what the offense is looking like. Chris Carson, you got McCormick, who actually was somebody I was kind of looking at. DK Metcalf, Dwayne Eskridge, and then Marvin Mims. We got out of the draft. Noah Font. We got Nate Davis, and then uh, we still kept with the you know offensive line we drafted last year, so we're hoping these two continue to develop. And then defensively, I think this looks a lot better. So we got Dexter on the defensive line, which was our seventh overall pick. You got Diggs here on the defensive line. So yeah, looking really good. And we got a head development corner out here as well. So things are starting to shape up the way we want them to. The Seattle team is starting to get built up from the ground up, which is looking really freaking good for us. So let's go ahead and simulate this season. Don't really know what to expect. I could see us making the playoffs, but at the same time, I could also see us not making it. It could go either way. Kind of depends on Malik Willis is for us and kind of, you know, how the, the defense develops and stuff like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and see if we can maybe make the playoffs this year. It is definitely possible. So at the end of the season, we went 6-11. and 11, So not that great, but I'm telling you right now, I think one more offseason will be in good shape. So Malik Willis, I'm sure, had another decent year. The team is probably just going to continue to develop even more. And uh, one more offseason, I think, will do us good. So we're up to an 83 overall. So like I said, if we can just kind of cash in on this next offseason, uh, offense was 21st in the NFL, and then defense, let's see, was 12th in the NFL. So like I said, things are looking, you know, kind of shaping up. Malik Willis has still been very, very solid. 28 touchdowns and interceptions, up to a 76 overall. Chris Carson, 900 yards. Malik Willis with 300 rushing yards. Uh, DK Metcalf with 1,200 yards. 900 for Marvin Mims, who ended up being really good, and Eskridge with 8. So Dwayne Eskridge has actually been really good for us. And then uh, defensively, if we take a look, sacks-wise, we had uh, six from Dexter, five and a half from Taylor, then five from Diggs, and then two from Sanders. Interceptions, we had three from Jamal Adams, three from Mike Hughes, two from Greedy Williams, and one from Darrell Taylor. So obviously, a little bit more work to do, but we are getting closer and closer to where we want to be. So let's get to this offseason. We're going to make this a quick offseason because, like I said, I think this quick turnaround could lead us to the playoffs next year. So I'm re-signing Noah Font. I'm re-signing Jordan Brooks. And then Darrell Taylor and Damian Lewis, I'm actually going to gamble on a little bit. I'm going to see if there's anything better that's available to us in free agency. We have like 90 or $80 million in cap space. So we're going to be able to sign, or I guess we have $69 million, which is still a lot though. So um, let's go take a look. See if we got anything better at those two positions. So uh, taking a look, I just want to continue to kind of see where everyone's development is at right now. So Malik Willis is normal to Vev. Mims is a star development. Chris Carson uh, so we obviously lost our left guard. We got both these guys up to a 70 overall. Not too bad. And defensively, uh, BJ Jol Okay, I forgot we have BJ Jolari just sitting behind here. So we might not even need an outside linebacker. Yeah, Puna Ford and then corners. And obviously, uh, we got Greedy Williams and Forbes down there with a freaking star development. So, uh, yeah, we could definitely get like a nose tackle. I mean, we could literally just go for anything at this point. We kind of uh, have everything. Most weakness, though, is still the offensive line, which has still been a problem throughout the whole video. But uh, let's go take a look at the best available free agents, and we could probably get a couple of them. So let's see. We have Justin Tucker as the best free agent. We have Shake, Shaq Mason, Tyler Boyd, Jason Kelsey. This is a terrible free agency class. Very bad. So uh, Derek Brown, maybe we just put him opposite of Dexter. Set up Puna Ford. We could do that. Or do we want to spend our money elsewhere? I don't really see anything I like, though, to be honest with you. Grover Stewart. Uh, I think for sure we need to get a guard 
100%. Shaq Mason was here. That might be the guy I just go for because uh, uh, we can't obviously afford to walk out of here with no guard. We just let Lewis walk. So I think my money is going to go towards Shaq Mason for a couple of years. He is 31, but I mean, he's pretty much the best available guard here. So we're going to try to get him and bring him in. And then honestly, uh, Derek Brown, we go for him maybe. I mean, it is a possibility. We didn't resign Puna Ford though. So wow, Vikings have offered this man a massive contract. Do I want to continue to up this? I really don't, to be honest with you. I'm actually going to go elsewhere. That is a huge contract they have offered him. So, uh, I don't know, man. What are we going to do? Left guard. Let's go take Lake Lake and Thomason and then Damian Lewis. Do we just go for Damian Lewis, I guess. Yeah, I guess we'll just bring back Damian Lewis. He was solid. So we'll bring him back on the defensive line. It sucks. He went down in development trait, but, um, we'll bring him back. And I think I kind of am debating whether I want to go for Derek Brown. He is 26 years old. Put him opposite of Stewart. That could be a huge upgrade we kind of need. And it's like the only upgrade we really can get. So yeah, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try to strike for uh, Derek Brown here. Offer him a contract. 107 total points. It's going to be his number one offer by a little bit. So increase this. Whoa, don't want to increase that. Let's increase this by just a little bit. And I think this will be literally like our only good signing. Um, maybe we could gamble here and go for some uh, trades. Yeah, we should probably maybe try to make a trade or two. That wouldn't hurt. So we're beefing up the offensive line with Lyle Collins from the Dallas Cowboys. Um, actually, right now, currently, he is seeking a trade, apparently, or the Cowboys want him to. I've given permission to seek a trade. So we got Lyle Collins to fill out one of our tackle position needs, and uh, that'll beef up the offensive line a little bit. Let's see if we get Derek Brown and Lewis, and I think I'm content with walking out of free agency pretty happy. So let's see. We get both of them, and just like that, we have upgraded the team just a little bit. Nothing crazy. Fortunately, the free agency class is just very horrible, so there's not much you can do about that. But this will be our team going into next season, of course, whatever we draft as well. So uh, I'm probably not going to show the draft just because uh, I just want to move on and uh, get to this next season. So we got Lewis, we got Patterson, which isn't that great still, but you got Malik Willis, uh, DK Metcalf, Jonah Williams, Lyle Collins now here in uh, Seattle. And then defensively, it looks really good over here. Derek Brown, Jex, Dexter, and we obviously also have uh, depth at the defensive line and the corners backs looks really good as well so we could use a number one corner technically so maybe just maybe i trade for a number one corner and we call it good after that i think i'm gonna do that we're gonna trade for a number one corner i'll call it good after that this just in aj terrell has requested a trade out of atlanta and wants to go play for the seattle seahawks okay he didn't actually do that but we are getting aj terrell from the atlanta falcons to bring him in to be our number one corner we have so many freaking corners but at the same time it doesn't matter because we have so much cap space so That'll be it. We brought in AJ Terrell to be our corner, and now we are ready for this next season. So I am very, very ecstatic about how... Do we have so many freaking corners? It's actually kind of ridiculous, but whatever. We are ready to go. We got our team. We are ready to roll. Let's go into this next season. Seattle can be back on top in this division. Center still sucks, but I'm just going to continue to rely on him and trust in him to do what I need him to do. Let's go ahead, get to this next season, and let's see what we can make happen. So at the end of the season, the Seattle team is finally back in the postseason. We went 10-7 and seven on the season, are facing Carolina in round one. Let's develop everybody here. Let's go take a look at our player stats and kind of see how things went, see how our offense was, and see how our defense was, and then we're ready to jump in against Carolina. So 28th in the offense, which is not good, but hey, still made the playoffs. Defense was 8th in the NFL, so defense... Has developed really well. Maybe a Legion of Boom 2.0, might I say? Probably not. But uh, Malik Willis, 20 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Rushing wise, Chris Carson, 1,200 yards, 16 touchdowns. Receiving, DK Metcalf, 1,200 yards, 5 touchdowns. And then Dwayne Eskridge, like I said, has been really good throughout the video. Marvin Mims and Noah Font, uh, solid as well. And defensively, since we were the number one overall defense, I better see somebody in double digit sacks. All right, we got 10 from Dexter, which is great. Seven from Sanders, six from Diggs. So our young defensive line is shining, which combined 23 sacks. You love to see that. Derek Brown, three and a half. Chris Barnes, one and a half. And then Aaron Exceptions, three from Jordan Brooks, three from Terrell, who came over, and then three from Jamal Adams. So absolute W. You also had a couple, or actually had AJ Terrell getting a pick six or a fumble return touchdown as well, which is just fantastic. Let's go in and play the Carolina Panthers and kind of see how this is going to go. So Carolina, I imagine they don't have Deshaun Watson, but in real life, that could be the guy we would be facing. Well, let's go see if we can knock them out. Here we go. We are in the playoff game as Carolina comes in and scores immediately. We do not do anything in return. It is 10-0. to Still nothing on the board. Okay, Malik Willis, kind of need you to do... There we go. 7-10. to And we get a stop. Go put up 14, please. Go do something, Willis. 7-10. to Not looking good. Third quarter, we get the ball. And still nothing, man. 
And now Carolina's up 17 to 7. And we put up 14 to 17. W. Do I have to come in here and score myself? Because honestly, I don't trust this offense right now. Apparently, we are just really freaking bad. So don't know really what the, what the problem is, but I'm going to need to solve it badly. So I almost just kind of sold there, but it's all right. Because I'm going to scramble around and I'm going to get some yardage here. So that is going to be like a 20 yard gain. We'll definitely take that. I'm just going to scramble my butt off with Malik Willis, I guess. I don't know why we are sucking so badly, but it is not working for me. So uh, DK. You are about to be in one-on-one -on -one man coverage, hopefully. The safety is going to come up. I believe it. Yes, he is. You guys are absolutely stupid. There's no way you let DK one-on-one -on -one like that. Give me that every time. Let's go. I, I didn't think, I didn't know the safety was actually going to do that, but hey, I'll take it. So, all right, let's go. I'm going to scramble it. Ooh, I kind of have RB wide open, but you know what? I don't even care. This defensive tackle is really fast, but it's all right. Seven yard line. I can go put up this touchdown real quick and we'll be... In the lead, but that don't mean anything, obviously, because, uh, you know, they could just easily return the score, return the favor. So Noah Font's wide open. Give me that touchdown every time. That was easy. That's all. That's as simple as it is, Malik Willis. Don't make it too complicated. Carolina comes back and immediately responds. I'm going to trust Malik Willis to do it this time. I gave him some momentum and he absolutely did nothing with it. What are we doing, man? How are we losing to Sam Darnold and the Panthers, bro? Whatever, man. Regardless, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been recording for about an hour, so I'm just going to end it off there. Seattle Seahawks have a uh, interesting future ahead of them, man. I don't, really don't think they're going to get Deshaun Watson, though, because the team just doesn't look good around. Why would he want to go there? I mean, they have weapons. Don't get me wrong, but offensive line is bad. I mean, they could build it up, obviously, but I just don't see Watson going there. But hey, you never know. Anything can happen. Thank you guys for watching. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.